doing its own pressurization in the skin. Observe the brilliance with your eyes. As you open the eyes, look around. Feel the looseness of the body. Feel the texture of your skin again. Feel the looseness of the toes and the tips. Feel the looseness of the neck. Describe the feeling like you just took a bath. Hmm? Then you didn't practice meditation, you lived it. This feeling that you feel is what they've been calling for centuries I am presence. But you have to be able to walk with it. The cells are osmotically utilizing the oxygen in the environment. And then you can understand Brother Jesus when he said, I of myself can do nothing, but the Father in me do everything. But he was not talking philosophy. He was talking physics. I of the cell can do nothing 
about this energy field, which is breath of life, does all the movement to the sun to constrict and dilate the cells. But that's not intellect, that's consciousness. Intellect is something you have to program into it. You're like a brand new computer plugged into the socket. And then you have to fall back in the program to work. But that feeling that you feel is the ongoing cellular rejuvenescence. When you shift away from it, then you live to die. When you keep identifying with it, you live to live. So resurrection, immortality, is not a goal. It's an ingrained principle within the structure of the mechanism, waiting for recognition called love. A day like this, he proved that he transcended the structure by the knowledge of the physics. Many have done it by avoidance. The path of confrontation is the hardest. But the caterpillar does it all the time as a model. Till we come to the conscious application of it ourselves. So, it's not a goal. It's an imprint in your mechanism to be awakened by conscious love. Therefore, the commandment, love the Lord thy God with all of your mind, is a foregone fact that you can't have breath of life till they cut the cord for you to breathe the experienced mind and with all of your heart that allows the doctor to know you pumping and with all of your strength that's the synchronicity of the respiration to the muscular structure and the soul you can't find that object is living soil because it's the essential quantum oxygen that activates it. So man's body cannot save his soul, but man's soul can save his body from his ignorance. So all the realized masters have taught their truth. Today we are now trying to catch up with them. But we are doing it in a quantum leap by jumping from the long exhaustion process of repeating words that sets up frequencies to where we can incorporate frequencies around us and clean the cells immediately to warrant the transformation. So what you were exposed to a little while ago is what we would refer to as a, a sonic vacuum. ridding you of all your so-called terminology from the <coughs> which you might have identified throughout the centuries in talking a language. Clearing the cells up so they resonate back to the actual sums that hold them together.
Now you'll notice after the process that the body breathes very slow. That's the evidence that it's corrected itself like this normal vibrancy. <coughs> and the evidence will gradually show up in your biological age, not your chronological age. Health is based on the biological age, not the chronological age. So, realization of God is not magic powers or knowing the future and can't live it before it happens. Realization of God is the capacity to act now. Without feeling in a state of quandary. And that the body feels flexible and vibrant. And it goes on all the time in that state. <coughs> so, your own discovery and application of your consciousness is the evidence you'll find every day. They're called, every moment is called for a great price. They cannot be rehearsed, they cannot be duplicated, and they're constantly ever new. So every opportunity from the day one you enter the <coughs> body form to this very moment are all unique opportunities. They're all unique pearls of great price because they're all the moments you lived in conscious state, but you can only reflect to them now as memory. And as you continue to live in it, you will refer to it as more of me, more of me. <coughs> Moving <coughs> electrons. But it's not somebody sitting in a throne, spiritual power our consciousness is a unified principle. It's there, incorporates us, and it becomes us. But it's difficult for us to recognize it in its simplicity and to move it. It's easy to get into the uh, placebo effect of belief and suggestion difficult to recognize the actual functioning of the physics which Paul had referred to when he said, I rebuke you in the rejoicing, meaning I don't cater anymore to the belief systems and the holy and now attitudes, but I live and die or breathe and function in the Lord now. And understanding is greater than the gift. Once you understand how you put together, you're in total control of yourself. You're driving your own car. You're not a passenger in it. So, None of the realized masters will breathe for you. That's your eternal gift to you, to breathe for yourself.
if you have any questions to ask, we are trying to. We had quite an impact. Mm -hmm. um, Donald, the last time you were here, I think I was sitting in a chair over here, and all of a sudden, I just felt a very, very intense amount of love, joy, and bliss just well up inside me. And I don't know why, and I don't care, but I, what my reaction to it was. I don't know, it's hard to explain. I, I, I clamp down. Now, does that mean that I'm... Well, there, there was a fear of it. I was afraid of letting go, experiencing that, I guess. Um, it was like a taste, of, I mean, I've, I've been reading and hearing and talking about this state of being and, and I wanted, you know, describing to experience it like that. And I got just a taste of it and it was too much, it was too intense. And I shut it off. I mean, could you maybe speak a little bit about that or, or I mean, is, was it something, is my body not I mean, am I not ready for that yet, or am I just, um, in some, I mean, that must be the reason, at some level. Well, you just answered the reason. <laughs> yeah. Your body wasn't ready. My body wasn't ready. Right. You know, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. <laughs> I didn't make it, I'm stuck in it. <laughs> Our consciousness always accelerates by the desire to know or feel. And that's the hydrogen that does that. But the oxygen is the one that makes you actually live it. And that's what the body has to experience. So if you didn't breathe oxygen, you're not going to live it. But you may crave it as much as you want, and that's the hydrogen in you. And the two together makes water. And you're about 80 to 90 percent all water inside your body. So the, the panic is in that particular interaction between the two gases. That's what we call the oscillation function, or the bubbling. That's what gets carbon dioxide next. So we're full of hot air. <laughs> but uh, the ratio or the height of love that is available to the human mechanism has no boundary lines. It's the degree of toxicity that will allow you to experience that ratio. So the only requirement of man in order to be merging in the creative intelligence is to cleanliness. We call it cleanliness is next to godliness. But if you refer to godliness as cohesive exchange or love, magnetism, then to clean up is a de detoxification to experience gradual levels of it. So the more you detoxify your cells, the more the levels of interaction with oxygen osmosically increases. And you call it love because it, the magnitude reaches out more and more into the electrical fields. So your degree of toxicity is your limitation. There aren't any sins, but misapplied decisions. But you're always going to be forgiven for your misapplied decisions because other wise men have already given their word and their life as a sort of a master charge credit card. All we need to do is clean up the body to expand the free the feeling. So they don't have anything to teach us other than to make us conscious of the fact that we must clean the cellular structure. So in another way they say, build me a temple that I may dwell in the midst thereof. 
Well, the I am presence can dwell in a dirty cellular structure. You're not going to live in what? A dirty structure. So you, you clean it up, build it properly, and then you enter to be the tenant. So it's the same way with I am presence, which is oxygenation of the cellular structure. The more the body is kept clean, the more the oxygenation is enhanced. We never look at it that way before because we never thought in those type of terms. We were too busy using uh, agricultural terms and uh, missing the actual uh, experience and took so long through an exhaustion process called prayer unceasingly <laughs> and twirling rosary, but it's all right, we have to come through that route. <laughs> Well, if you had listened to the click of the beads, we might have got there faster <laughs> instead of what we were saying. The actual beads were doing the work. <laughs> so what we were listening to tonight was the actual resonance clicks, not words, for how these frequencies innovate on the cellular structure to clean it. So it's a form of sonic vacuuming. So. <laughs> And cleanliness is two ways, oral and osmotically through the skin. Now, the oral input is minimal to the osmotic exposure because all around you the sonic waves are bombarding you night and day, 24 hours a day, regardless of how much food you eat. Even if you don't eat or you fast, you can be bombarded with sonics. That's why Jesus said, it's not what you eat that defiles you. The sonic waves are there and they're going to hit you and however you hit this body, they're going to leave residual reactions in the skin. More and more we're discovering that all the impacts do leave crystallizations in those areas and those crystals don't necessarily all come out. They interfere with the functioning of the nerve ends and the muscular structure. So you have your neural muscular impotency occurring that make them malfunction after a while. They, you call it aging. Now as you clean it off, and so it's taken us a long while to realize the methods to clean it. And when we, we say we're born again and the Holy Spirit, we cry like crazy, but that's a hell of a cleaning too. And you roll up in the dirt and you let it out. <laughs> but then, then the body starts reactivating itself and you start feeling healthy and start living again. Now, none of the miracles that were done were out of the range of health. They're all in the range of health to make you conscious of your body and you wouldn't go to be lifted up if you were healthy. And so the healthy person though doesn't go to a spiritual uh, process, he's already healthy. Or a religious process, he's already healthy. It's when the person is sick they go. Now when the rich man went to Jesus, he told him the hardest thing to do, go sell what you got, follow me, go be a pauper. But not to be a pauper by uh, wasting it away, taking the avoidance approach that was the time, the technique they used in those days to pursue a life of service. Today we know we don't have to sell the products out to follow that kind of knowledge. Uh, Selfless service can be done with all the possessions you have without being attached to them. So the heart opens up and the abundance flows and you're not personally possessed or attached by it. So we've come a long way in understanding what it's all about. And uh, as I said last time when I was here, 
elements can only harass you. That's their right. They don't have a right to kill you. No element has a right to kill you. They agreed with the intelligence to put you together. That's why it was said, come let us make man our manifestation, male and female. And the two forms are a composite of sperm and ovum. The elements, together with the creative intelligence, put this manifestation together. For one simple fact, until we recognize that simple fact, we go all over in the 84 million ways to find the truth. But the parts are many and the truth is the same. The one fact is you have dominion over them in the conscious level of the voice, but you don't have ownership over them. They have the right to harass you, to test you, to see to what extent your ability to cope with it. But they don't have a right to kill you. Now, if you understand the, the way it's set up, you'll realize right away you're immortal. Because elements are immortal and they can't die. So Lazarus had to get out of the grave if he didn't want to. And those guys who were pretending to be drowning had to quit their nonsense because the wind had to go play somewhere else while he was on the boat. And the rich man was told to go let go of your holding and learn to flow with it. So we see even all the ways that we we're told to do the process, we still couldn't grasp it. We went to the extent of uh, trying to destroy the body and the body triumph over the fact <coughs> that elements can't die. But you can lock yourself into living to die or living to live. And that's what the breath is given for as a gift to see if you can recognize which of the two is valid for you to pursue. of impact that your body is exposed to or will have to be exposed to is predetermined by the script you were given to play. It's called, <laughs> it's called the, the script of the horror. So you're playing that particular script in this particular costume and so it's already set. It's for you to realize that the costume has a value if you play the script. And the value is called the Oscar. <laughs> and the Oscar is, if you play the script to its correct requirements, you keep the costume permanently. And therefore, that's the only thing you can actually own in the end in this cosmos. You can't own the other elements, but you can own your own costume permanently. So it is said, to him that overcome it, I will not send forth a second time, but I'll make him a pillar in the house of the Lord. It's not in the imagination, it's cosmic physics, based on a simple requirement <coughs> that you stick out the process of the horoscope. 
and don't try to avoid it or get around it. Just go through it. Because no horoscope is set up to be a deficit. It's 50-50. 50% of the time it's harassment and 50% of the time it's happiness. So you break even. <laughs> <laughs> but you don't know that until you go through it. <laughs> See? Uh, every horoscope has a terminal condition, a feeling of you're going to go to cosmic vacation. <coughs> it's at that critical moment. If you don't panic, you can collect on your horoscope. But if you panic, then you go on cosmic vacation. See, I, I asked for mine years ago, and so I was pushed into the realization very fast that all your karma means death upon death, death upon death, death upon death, death upon death. It's like a rosary. <laughs> so, <laughs> so when I realized that's the essence of the thing, the where is life? Life is breed to live. And I saw Brother Jesus now them looking at me, and there is a body smashed up, and there's the other one waiting to be born. My choice is do I breathe to live or shut down and let that body that is waiting for me provide me an opportunity to go through the uterine canal, finish it up, start all over again, only to come back to what? Breathe to live? I'm familiar with this one, and maybe I don't know how much pain it's got till I go back to it. <laughs> But I went back in it and I tell you this much, I love you. And what I got to love about it is this. Mom and pop, no matter what their mind frame might be, I went up the Adrian Canal to be a winner. And that's the most important aspect. Because they provided the immunity for me that I would have to work in this way. And it doesn't matter if it's yellow, brown, slant eye, or black, or green, <laughs> or male, or female. I had to work in some frame to recognize my understanding that it's the frame that has the quality to acquire the ultimate, a carbon-based body. Not until that understanding occurs whatever form you find yourself to come to that comprehensiveness a carbon type is the required ultimate because it goes from charcoal to carborundum to diamond and no other element can do that but this is a, a form that is offered to you if you volunteer to clean up your act. The other forms were there given to you or us including me in the initial manifestation but because we were given individuality and didn't know how to use it it became egotism. So they call it Lucifer or devil and all kind of crazy labels but <laughs> the anguish is only in locking in to the ownership of the element because we can't own an element. An element puts us together and an element allows us the freedom to operate it, control it. Therefore, if we go through the process of the harassment then we can rise above it. But if we don't go through it, then we're <coughs> put into the level where we constantly have to recognize the harassment as a means of developing that quality in us. So all the wise men have come back. They call them avatars, and descent, well, messiahs. They all come back knowing that the carbon-based body is the ideal body to work with on a conscious level. And
and they're not walk-ins. So we're not here to criticize the walk-ins or otherwise, but we have already volunteered to take this freight to work with. Could we gripe? Yes. Oh yes, uh, grip, gripe and grape. Grip, yeah. Grip, grip first, grip. then gripe it, <laughs> and then grip. What do you do with grape? And also you ferment them and do what? Drink wine. And so that's the, the ultimate of grip, gripe, and grip. <laughs> Cosmic it's drunk. Yes, you're entitled. The Chinese people have a saying, it's all right to talk to yourself, but don't move your lips in the public. <laughs> I, I'm not even able to get my machines to work where I can employ it. And I'll press a button and program the computer and they won't work. And my employer will come and do the same thing and they'll start right now. And he'll watch me do it and it won't work. And he'll do it and they will. Yeah, but I've seen that happen too. What happens when uh, I even ask someone else to, to turn it on? <laughs> <laughs> what is it with, with that? Harassment. <laughs> 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 All right. Hmm. Great. <laughs> So do I just keep uh, starting him up and hoping he'll, he'll come on? This impact tonight, I ended up at their house because my wife was gone as my witness stopped in the middle of Grant Road and I drove all the way to their house and I could not see. We had the impact, we had to go back and get my car, the wife was working. <laughs> well, your body gets charged up with electricity, you know. So sometimes it interferes with electrical wiring. Is that bad? Well, it's not practical. It's not practical. <laughs> <laughs> I blow out my bulbs all the time. How can I stop doing that? <laughs> Ground. Can the brakes themselves die Yeah. I see mercury must be very predominant in their uh, chart. the room. What? You heard it. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever heard what you sound like inside your body? Yes. Huh? Have you ever heard what you sound inside of your body? What do you think you sound like inside of your body? Well, it's very 
I'll be back in a few seconds and then I'll and you'll hear it inside of yourself. Each part of your anatomy has five of those songs to hold it together. And the five of those songs aren't music. And that's why we do a sonic workshop to show you how this thing runs through your body and then how to identify it and then do a totification. Listen to us, this funny song. You know, something interesting here, I, I know that you a couple of times talked about how the exhaustion technique that the American Indians use for that drumming and, and stuff. And I went uh, recently to, they had a powwow their annual powwow, which isn't for us, the public. They just do it, and if we want to come, it's okay. Mm -hmm. And an interesting thing happened to me. I was just sitting there enjoying it, and I, I went, got in my truck. It had been very windy that day, and I went to straighten my hair up, hair, and all my hair stood straight up mm -hmm. as soon as I got my hands closed. Mm -hmm. I thought, wow, that's strange. The next day I went back to observe again, and the same thing happened. That was the electrical uh, charge that I got from the that drumming and yeah. stuff that they were doing. You see, I was really freaked out about that. <laughs> <laughs> the scientist has caught up with the agricultural heritage and already made the quantum leap of what was the intent. But we're not here to tear down the agricultural heritage. We're here to respect it as an incentive to get to that level. But then where do you go when you arrive at that level? What's the next step? The next step is the functioning. Because the agricultural level does not make you get off your tukas. It tends to sedate you in your corner and feel happy. The technical brings you out of the sedated state into an active condition. That's why Jesus didn't stay in the desert. And he didn't stay for the last 18 years before he came back out in the other part of the world. He came back into the world to live with the people, to show them that the active level, that's what all the yogis of mass, they, they want you to accept the active level. But if you don't feel that the active level is where you want to be, you'll tend to gravitate to the sedative level. So we call that practicing meditation. Living meditation is this. Yeah. That's living it. But you're not upset inside or worried about what's going to happen next to <laughs> So you're hearing these songs now. Listen as you walk and function. Sounds familiar? Then you turn on the water and you tap. Or you go and take a shower or something. song, don't listen to the song.
sound brought the body into manifestation. We know that without doubt now we have actual photography of where sound moves elements to give them geometry. shaping a heart to match the pattern. So we will call past the ancient technique of exhaustion to the actual capability of molding the form in a three-dimensional function. And therefore, the quantum leap has occurred already. When I was here the last time, I gave you a Christmas present. of five songs that hold you together. Now to retain it, as, to keep, yes, but uh, hearing it isn't the important thing, it's identifying with it. Well, what do you feel?
darkness, something that doesn't leave you. Has it left you yet? That's what we're talking about. Has it left you yet? That sensation. Has it gone from you? Is the room still bright?